For today's video, I want to talk about whether aquarium quick start bacteria in a bottle products are actually scams. A lot of people do get caught out by these and recently two other creators who I personally consider subject matter experts on the topic have released videos going over them and I want to touch on both of them. I have made a couple of videos in the past about bacteria in a bottle products and my stance hasn't changed. In my opinion, they can work well in some setups, but in many cases, people have thrown money away because the water parameters in their tank just aren't suitable for the bacteria strains in the bottle. And I know there's reviews out there supporting these bacteria in a bottle products, but unless they share their pH, KH and water temperatures, they're essentially useless for most people, unfortunately. So getting into the video, and I want to start with Dr. Timothy Hovenek, better known as Dr. Tim in the hobby. You've probably heard that name on my channel before because I often use his ammonia solution when cycling a lot of my tanks. Now just to be clear, Dr. Tim does own his own company that sells quick start bacteria products with his own proprietary strain so there is a potential conflict of interest on this one. But personally, I do agree with a lot of what he said in his recent video linked in the description. Unlike a gimmick brand like Dr. Pepper, Dr. Tim actually has a PhD in ecology, evolution and marine biology and he's published several research papers which I will touch on later. Recently on his TikTok channel he posted a video explaining why many bacteria in a bottle products are scams which are his words not mine. He suggests that a lot of them don't even contain bacteria at all and when they do very few actually have the right types of bacteria to get the job done which is something I agree with. He also explains that even if a product does contain night refined bacteria it doesn't mean it's the right types of night refined bacteria to survive in your aquarium depending on your pH, KH and water temperature which is something I've tried to hammer home constantly on this channel. To understand this better we have to go back to the 1990s when Dr. Tim published a research paper that shook up the industry when it comes to night refined bacteria. He showed that a nitrospira-like bacteria strain was actually the key night refier in aquariums not traditional ammonia and nitrite oxidizing bacteria that a lot of people still assume do the job even to this day. At the time he faced pushback from companies that were happily selling bottles of ammonia and nitrite oxidizing bacteria. But keep in mind this was back in the 1990s and since then a lot of research papers have been released that essentially back up exactly what he was saying. So even though it does look like his original findings were correct at least for a lot of people's water parameters, many companies are still pushing those outdated bacteria strains in their quick start products. Now here's where it starts to get a bit geeky and interesting because the aquarium hobby doesn't have a lot of dedicated research but luckily there's a huge crossover with the wastewater treatment industry. And before anyone thinks these research papers are a money grab for people in the aquarium hobby, let's put this in perspective because the aquarium industry was valued at 3.6 billion US dollars in 2023. Compare that to the water and wastewater treatment market, which was worth over 323 billion US dollars in that same year. So that means the aquarium hobby is barely 1% of the size of the water and wastewater treatment industry. These researchers don't care about selling bacteria in a bottle products to people in the aquarium hobby because they are primarily focused on securing government contracts which are worth a lot more money. And because their focus is purifying wastewater to get it back into the drinking system of a city, they are better funded and there's more accountability because there's a higher chance of legal repercussions if they make mistakes. Since Dr. Tim's paper back in the 1990s, a bunch of research papers from the wastewater industry have backed him up saying nitrospira is more efficient than ammonia or nitrite oxidizing bacteria. It is starting to become more accepted that unless your aquarium has a very specific set of water parameters such as perfect pH, KH and water temperature, RK and Nitrospira are doing most of the nitrification work in your tank, not the legacy bacteria strains that are in a lot of quick start bacteria in a bottle products. And there is another twist to this as well because back in his original paper Dr. Tim called it a Nitrospira-like bacteria strain. Fast forward from the 1990s to 2015 and different research teams have discovered that certain types of Nitrospira bacteria actually have what's called a common moxability. 
This means that a single type of bacteria can convert toxic ammonia into toxic nitrite and then into nitrate without any other microorganisms helping it. Today we know that at least 66 of the 132 known nitrospira bacteria varieties are able to do this and in general they also have a far wider pH, KH and temperature suitability range. This does make me wonder if one of these is what Dr Tim was studying in his paper without actually knowing it. So just to round this section off and go over why all of this matters, because I'm recording this in August 2025, decades after Dr Tim's original paper and 10 years after Comamox bacteria was first identified. To my knowledge, most quick start products on the market are still using those same outdated ammonia and nitrite oxidising strains of bacteria. Not only has Dr Tim said those aren't the main players in aquariums but wastewater treatment research also backs this up multiple times too. Now for legal reasons I'm not going to outright call these products scams like Dr Tim did but it does make me wonder why these companies aren't being more transparent about what's exactly in the bottle. It also makes me wonder why they haven't updated their formulas to include bacteria strains which are now backed up by a lot of research. Part of it does make me wonder if it's because sites like ResearchGate and Science Direct have a ton of research papers that are free for people to read, so if they actually put the bacteria strains on the bottle people are just going to google it and work out if they actually work or not. So moving on from that I want to talk about a dedicated research paper that I found that tested 5 different quick start bacteria in a bottle products. Now this paper isn't perfect because unfortunately it doesn't list the full names of the products they tested. I was curious and I reached out to one of my friends who works as a researcher in the agricultural industry and she explained that this is probably due to legal reasons because they found such a low success rate with the products. Still the study does give us something useful to look at because the researchers set up both control tanks and test tanks and monitored them over a 14 day period to see if any of the quick start products made a difference during cycling the new tank. What they found was that for the most part the differences in the ammonia reduction compared to the control tank were minimal at best. However, one product did stand out which was a Tetra product and again they didn't name the full name of the product but I'm assuming it's Tetra Safe Start. Unlike a lot of bacteria in a bottle products, Tetra Safe Start does list at least at genus level what's in the bottle and it does have the usual suspects such as Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter which are common in this type of product but it also contains Nitrospira bacteria. I just found it interesting that in this paper the only bacteria in a bottle quick start product that showed any real benefit to the cycle in time contains the same type of bacteria that Dr Tim researched back in the 90s. So moving on from that and I want to talk about a recent video from Primetime Aquatics YouTube channel. Jason sat down with a microbiologist from Fritz Aquatics to discuss their product line, specifically their nitrifying bacteria in a bottle product such as Fritzyme 7. Now if you don't already know, Jason from Primetime Aquatics holds a bachelor's degree in biology, a master's in biotechnology and chemical science and a graduate certificate in aquaculture and fish health. So basically the video is just two biologists geeking out about aquarium microorganisms. Now one thing that I always try and state and appreciate about Fritz Aquatics is that they are willing to be transparent about the weaknesses of their products. To my knowledge they are the only company that actually provides a detailed user guide going over their quick start bacteria including the recommended water parameters for optimal results in your tank. Unfortunately none of my tanks fall within those recommended ranges and I really don't think a lot of other people's will depending on what you're trying to do with the hobby. That said, their own guide also confirms that their formula focuses on Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter strains, the same legacy strains found in a lot of other products that do require that narrow range of water parameters to work. They also confirm that if your KH level in your tank is too low, typically below 4 or 5, the product simply won't work because KH is essential for some of these bacteria strains to work. It also goes over the recommended pH ranges, water temperature ranges and a few other requirements for this type of product to work, which in my opinion backs up that this type of bacteria do little to nothing in my personal aquariums and it is usually going to be RK or Nitrospira strains of bacteria that do all the heavy lifting. 
So to try and round the video off, I do think these products may help people who have the perfect water parameter ranges, but personally, I do think that's going to be a small number of people compared to everyone in the freshwater aquarium hobby. In my opinion, one of the biggest improvements companies can make to this type of product is be more transparent and clearly label which strains of bacteria, ideally down to genus, species and variety level, are actually in the bottle and put it on the label so people can research them. On top of that, they can also do a far better job of making sure people know what water parameters and what conditions are needed in their tank to get the most out of these products. As I mentioned earlier, Fritzheim 7 does provide a detailed user guide on their website, but as far as I remember at least, none of these limitations are actually on the bottle or the packaging, but it has been over a year since I last used that product. On top of that, there's also sales staff in aquarium and aquatic shops who may not really understand what's actually happening with these products and recommend it to people who are new to the hobby, thinking they'll instantly cycle their tank, then they put fish into the tank. The fish unfortunately don't make it because of toxic ammonia and toxic nitrite spike and then they leave the hobby. Now I understand these companies need to make a profit, but there's better ways to do it in my opinion, and I think the lack of transparency is exactly why these products are so controversial in the hobby and often called scams. And on top of that, the more I read into the nitrification process with more modern research, it does seem like ammonia oxidizing RK and the nitrospira bacteria strains are doing a lot of the work for most people. Unfortunately, our care can't be stored in spore form like bacteria, so it's not available in these bottles, which does limit how well they can perform in a lot of people's water parameters. This is why I personally prefer to just let my tank cycle naturally without using any quick start products. I've tried several different brands over the years and never noticed any real reduction in the cycling time in my tanks. In my experience, my aquariums usually take four to five weeks to cycle from scratch regardless of what I do and I'm perfectly happy with that if I'm honest. Anyway guys, that brings the video to an end. I will link to my fully sourced blog post on this in the description. I hope it's been helpful and helped some people save money when cycling their tanks and avoid buying these products. 